Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. I would like to continue talking about chemical energy. Um, primarily, the energy which is inside the molecules, uh, the energy which basically is attributed to the bonds between the atoms, which um, basically are the components of any molecule. Now, this lecture is part of the course Physics for Teens, uh, part of the uh, website unizor.com. It's a free educational website where I also have the prerequisite course Math for Teens. Mathematics, as you understand, is the foundation uh, which is absolutely necessary to learn physics. So I do suggest you to take, uh, or at least familiarize yourself with the Math for Teens course. Uh, all the topics, especially the calculus, which will be definitely needed for all the aspects of uh, our physics uh, course. Okay, so, uh, chemical energy. Let's just start from, um, from the beginning of this course. We were talking about uh, mechanical energy first. Now, what is mechanical energy? It's energy of objects as they are moving or positioned uh, somewhere relative to other objects. So it's basically an energy which is attributed to objects as we know them, like this marker or something like this. The next uh, topic within the energy um, uh, part of, the, of this course was about uh, thermal energy, the heat. Now, the heat is energy of the molecules inside of any object, and the molecules are actually the smallest components of any object, of any substance rather, which maintain the same properties as the substance itself. So, there is something which is called the molecule of water, which is water. Anything less smaller than the molecule of water is no longer be water. So, now, the chemical energy is even deeper. So, first we went from mechanical energy of the objects down to um, uh, thermal energy of the molecules inside the objects, but the molecules are still of the same substance. Now we are going inside the molecules to talk about the chemical energy. All right, so, basically, the um, chemical energy is somehow inside the molecule. So we have to talk about what actually molecule is. Well, there are certain components of every molecule. Now, the total number of different molecules, the total number of types of molecules, is extremely large, obviously. We have molecules of water, we have molecules of protein, we have molecules of this and that and that, hundreds, thousands, millions of different types of molecules. However, what's very interesting, there is a relatively limited, relatively small number of smaller components from which the molecules are made. Now, these smaller components are called atoms. And there are about a hundred different types of atoms. They're all collected into a table called periodic table of elements um, developed uh, primarily by um, Dmitry Mendeleev, the very important scientist who lived, uh, I think it was like 19th century in, 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 the, in Russia. So anyway, this periodic table of elements lists all the different types of elements from which molecules are created. Now, what is an example of more elementary um, uh, particle or whatever um, than the molecule? So, what are these little bricks, 100 or well, actually 103 right now, I believe, uh, of, of different types of uh, atoms from which the molecules are, are built? So, what are in this periodic table of elements? Well, the elements um, were uh, grouped into different uh, groups based on their properties, etc. 
But in any case, there are only about a hundred of them. And from different combination of these atoms, in different numbers, the molecules are created. So, let me just give an example of a particular element. Let's take iron. Iron is molecule of iron. Um, is uh, created by one atom of element called iron. So the name is the same, but the molecule of iron is not exactly the same as atom of uh, iron, of element iron. So one is considered, the molecule is considered with their physical properties, etc. The, the atom has its own in, inner structure, which we will talk about a little bit later. But anyway, let's just think about these as two different things, because it helps in other cases when the molecules are more complex. So what's more complex molecule? The molecule which contains two atoms, right? So there is a molecule called molecule of oxygen, and it contains two atoms of oxygen. Now in this case, if we have two atoms, unless they are connected to each other through some kind of a bonding, they will not be able to form a molecule. So, whenever we are talking about oxygen, as we are just picking it from the air, one molecule of oxygen, that's two atoms bonded together by inner connection, inner bonds. The forces which are acting between two atoms of oxygen they are connected to each other and make up a molecule of oxygen, right? So this is um, the molecule of oxygen and it has one bond. Now, in this particular lecture, I will exemplify this concept of energy which is inside the bonds, which, because that's exactly what we want to talk about in this lecture, the energy, the chemical energy, which is basically the energy of these bonds. Uh, we will talk about the gas called metha methane, and that's the formula which is basically uh, one atom of carbon connected to some kind of bonding with four atoms of hydrogen. So this is a molecule, these are bonds which we are talking about, and again the chemical energy inside of this gas, methane, is the energy of these bonds. We have to somehow investigate what, what, what is this energy, what is the energy inside the atoms, the atomic bonds, and this is the subject of this lecture. So first we have to de define basically what is um, the chemical energy of the bonds. Well, this is a potential energy because right now the molecule is basically as a whole, it's intact, right? So it's the same thing as solar system. Now the solar system is something which basically exists more or less intact and there is a potential energy of the movement of every planet, there is a potential energy of uh, uh, mm, gravitation relative to sun, etc. So if we want to change it somehow, we have to change this energy, we have to change the movements of, of planets, we have to move them forward or backwards, further from the sun and closer to the sun. Anyway, whatever, whatever the existing mechanisms which hold this particular solar system together, if we want to change it, we have to break something, right? So there is something like a potential energy of the system. This is exactly the same thing. There is a potential energy of all the bonds in between the atoms which comprise the molecule, which we have to break to release this potential energy. So chemical energy is a potential energy of the bonds which hold the molecule together. It's interatomic bonds and only because these bonds exist the molecule actually can be 
uh, can can exist. Okay, fine. So we have defined the chemical energy is a potential energy of the bonds between the atoms that comprise this particular molecule. Now, how can we use this energy? How can we actually release this energy? Well, as I was just talking about solar system, if we want to, you know, to release something which is inside the solar system, the energy we have to break somehow and rearrange it. Same thing with chemical uh, reaction. Chemical reaction is the way to break some molecules and create other molecules. So any chemical reaction changes the chemical composition. You have one substance which contains some, some kind of molecules, another substance which has another kind of uh, um, molecules. You combine them together, maybe apply certain conditions like heat, pressure, whatever else, and then the chemical reaction starts. And what is a chemical reaction? Well, the atoms from one molecule and from another molecule somehow are um, separated from, from the holes, from the molecules, so the bonds are broken, and then the new bonds are created. Now, this is a very complicated mechanism. However, we can represent it in uh, the way of some kind of a formula, chemical formula, and this will basically tell you what exactly is happening. Now, what happens uh, when you turn on the gas and uh, start uh, uh, light it up uh, if you have a regular kitchen stove? Well, the gas coming from the pipe is methane. Now, what happens with methane when it burns? Well, here's what happens. It combines with oxygen from the um, from the air, and as a result, let me take another marker. And as a result, we have something else. Now, what do we have? Well, we have. Um, carbon dioxide and we have water vapors so this is water this is carbon dioxide this is oxygen and this is methane well now this is supposed to be like a formula like a, an algebraic equation so parts should be equal now how many atoms of hydrogen for instance two here we have four so that's not a, a real equation. Now, what is a real equation? Well, we have to really equalize. Now, um, we have to put two here to make the number of hydrogen equal. C is one here and here. Oxygen is two and one times two, which is two, so it's four, so we need two to get two atoms of oxygen, right? And now we can put an equal sign here. So this is the chemical reaction which happens when you are um, cooking. <laughs> so um, the methane, the one molecule of me methane, actually, like put it this way, each molecule of methane is somehow um, reacts. It uh, it absorbs somehow in this chemical reaction two molecules of oxygen and as a result we have um, carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. Now we know that when you are uh, burning methane there is some heat generated so there is energy generated. Now where this energy is coming from? Well the energy is coming from the chemical energy inside these molecules. And that's what's very important, that's what exactly what's happening here. Uh, these bonds within these molecules are destroying, are destroyed somehow, and the new bonds are actually formed, 
and as a result of this certain energy gets freed basically okay so let's just count basically how can we count amount of energy here and here well we have to break the bonds right we have to break these bonds and have the result and we have to break these bonds and have the result and we will compare now if uh, the result will be not equal and result will not be equal whatever the difference is is the amount of heat which we will produce by burning the methane right now how can we experimentally probably determine this fact well we have to take one molecule of methane two molecules of oxygen combine them let them burn somehow and see what exactly the result uh, of amount of heat actually is produced huh we can't really do this experiment with one molecule right okay so what i will say is okay let's take proportional number of proportional number of like for each molecule of methane we will take two molecules of oxygen well how can we do that not easy right i mean we can measure the weight for instance or mass uh, of of the gas we can do that however how can i compare how much grams of this i had i have to take to and and, and this um to to make this ratio of the molecules one to two okay now for this we have to go even deeper into the atom so first we went from objects to molecules from molecules to atoms now we go deeper into the atoms now the whole uh, universe of different substances is created as we were talking about from about a hundred different elements types of atoms right which are in periodic table of elements of Mendeleev now what is the atom uh, consists of well for the purpose of this course we will build the uh, model of atom as it was basically more or less um, agreed by all the physicists uh, and we will completely ignore everything which is not as substantial and not contributing to whatever I would like to talk about so for our purposes we can view the atom as containing certain nucleus surrounded by electrons on the orbits around this nucleus nucleus in its turn contains two types of uh, particles protons and neutrons so we have protons we have neutrons and we have electrons I mean, I'm sure you've heard these names, but let me just, well, repeat it if you know it. So, protons and neutrons, somehow, there are some bonds between them, and they form nucleus. Certain number of protons and certain number of neutrons. They are combined together into a nucleus. Now, electrons are surrounding on different orbits, and they're like circulating around the neutrons uh, around the nucleus it's not an exact model it's not what actually is happening in, in in the real world well quite frankly i'm not sure anybody knows how it is exactly but the model is good enough for purposes and 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 certain experiments whatever we are doing that seems to correspond the model corresponds well the behavior of the model corresponds to behavior of the real things to a certain degree certain approximation Okay, now protons are electrically positive charged. Neutrons, uh, uh, neutrons are neutral. That's why they're called neutrons. And electrons are electri electrically negatively charged. So electrons are circulating and this electrical attraction between positive and uh, negative uh, holds them on, on the orbit. Now, electrons are very, very light so light that we will for our purposes we will ignore their mass 
Now, protons and neutrons are much heavier, significantly much heavier, and they actually uh, contributes the lion's portion of the mass of the atom. Now, they are more or less of the same mass, more or less, and we call this mass of the proton or a neutron atomic uh, weight unit, atomic weight unit. So, atomic uh, or mass unit rather, atomic mass unit I would say. So, the um, atomic mass unit of proton or neutron is considered to be one, okay? Now, let me just go again. Any substance, and there are millions of them, so millions of types of molecules, only 100 types of atoms, and each atom contains, in, for our purposes, three types of different particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. So, atoms, in their different configuration, these 100 types of atoms in different quantities and different uh, combination make up millions of different substances. Now, three types of elementary particles are making a hundred different atoms represented in the periodic uh, table of elements. So, from millions of uh, molecules, types of molecules, we have hundred, about a hundred, hundred and three types of atoms, and each atom is uh, consists of only three types of uh, different particles. So, in different quantities, uh, these three make up any element. Okay, that's quite an interesting. We, you see, we are simpli we are simplifying the universe. We are trying to build our universe, which is extremely complex, from a component from components, uh, and each component can be built from even more elementary components, right? So that, that, that's, it's like the car, and there are many, 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 many different types of cars, right? But they contain only certain uh, number of engine types, right? And then every engine contains only a certain number of parts from which this engine actually contains inside. So that's our gradual simplification of the universe to build uh, the whole picture of how the world actually is, uh, is, is made up. Okay, now, if we know what exactly each element's, each atom's composition as far as protons, neutrons and electrons, we can make a judgment about the weight of the atom. So, and we know, using certain electrical, magnetic, whatever other proportions, whatever other properties um, about different elements, we know, actually, what is the composition of each element in the uh, periodic uh, uh, table of elements of Mendeleev. So, there are 103 elements right now, and for each element we know what's the composition, how many protons, how many neutrons, and how many electrons. Well, ele number of electrons usually is the same as number of protons, because this is positive, this is negative, so they should be neutral. Otherwise, we will lose electrons, or we will may maybe consume some electrons from, uh, from, from, from the other side. It will not be neutral anymore, but atom is supposed to be neutral, and to make it neutral, we have to have the same number of protons and, 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 and electrons. Neutrons can be different. In many cases, the number of neutrons is a little less than number of protons, a little more than number of protons, or equal to the number of protons. Now, why the world is created this way, nobody knows, but we don't care right now. It's created this way, and we know about this particular um, model of the world, which kind of gives us the good impression of how, basically, the universe is created. Now, so what do we know? We know the internal structure of the hydrogen. Hydrogen contains one proton and one electron which is surrounding, which is circulating around this proton. Now, if it's a one proton, its atomic uh, mass is one. We have agreed that proton, each proton and each neutron has approximately mass of one. Actually, it's 1.000 something, etc. But for our purposes, we assume it's one. 
So that means that hydrogen has atomic mass, uh, atomic mass of 1. Now, similar consideration. We have carbon, it's 12. Uh, it's a certain number of protons, certain number of electrons, uh, and certain number of neutrons, but basically that's what makes the carbon. I think it's four protons and four electrons and eight uh, neutrons, but I'm not sure. Now, um, oxygen is 16. So there are 16 protons and neutrons together. I think it's 8 and 8. Maybe not. I don't remember again. Uh, what else is here? Nothing. So from these, we can actually calculate the atomic weights of each element which we are uh, using here, right? So let's just do it this way. So this would be 12 plus 4 times 1, right? H, H is 1, carbon is 12. Now this is 2 times uh, 16 times 2, right? O2 means 16 plus 16, and this 2, because we have two molecules. Now this is 12 plus um, 2 times 16, this is molecule, and this is 2 times, uh, H2 is 2 times 1, uh, and times uh, 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 plus 16. So, what's the result? 16 and 64, 80. Here we have uh, 12 and 32, that's 44, and the molecule of water is uh, 218 plus 36, right? 2, plus 2 times 18, 36. Uh, and that's also 80. Well, no wonder we have an equation, 80 and 80, because mass is the same. We are just rearranging the atoms, but it's exactly the same atom. One atom of uh, carbon here, one atom here four atoms of uh, hydrogen here, two and two here, two times two, that's four. And uh, we have four atoms of uh, oxygen, two and two, four. So obviously mass is supposed to be the same. Okay, now how about the energy? Now this is much more complex. You see, um, to uh, to, to, to evaluate the energy, we have to break certain uh, atomic bonds, right? Now, the theory behind what is exactly atomic bond is complex and is beyond the scope of this uh, course. However, what I can do, I can actually use certain uh, known facts which have been established by the theory and corresponding experiment. And I can tell you the following. So what is molecule of methane? It's four bonds between atom of uh, uh, carbon and four atoms of um, hydrogen. And it has been established that each bond is 410 uh, kilojoule per mole. And I have used a new word, mole. Here is a very important thing. Now, we were talking about some experiments where we have to take one molecule of this, two molecules of that, then we will get molecule of this and two molecules of that. We can't really experiment with molecules. Now, however, now using the atomic weights, we can make certain amount of methane and certain amount of oxygen in such a way that for each molecule of methane, 
we will have two molecules of oxygen. How can we do it? Well, very simply. If molecule of CH2 weighs, what, 12 plus uh, 4, it's uh, 16, and each molecule of O2 is uh, 16 plus 16 is 32, so we need uh, set, uh, 64, right? So if we will take 16 gram of uh, methane and 64 gram of oxygen, then the number of molecules here will be exactly twice as much as the number of molecules here, right? If one molecule we weighs or has a mass uh, 16 atomic mass units, then 16 gram will contain certain number of molecules, which is what? Well, it's certain number of molecules, which is proportional to molecular, um, to atomic weight, mole molecular weight using uh, uh, atomic uh, mass of uh, each one. So if each one has 16 atomic units, then we have 16 gram. Now, each of these has uh, 32, so whenever we have 64 grams, we will have twice as many molecules. Since we are just making the weight of the gas proportional to the uh, weight of one molecule. That means that in each 32 gram, we will have exactly the 32 gram of oxygen, we will have exactly the same number of molecules as in 16 grams of this. So if we want twice as many, we have to just take 64. So my point is that it's very convenient to deal not with molecules of substances, but with moles of substances, where mole is the number of gram which is equal to the atomic weight. So if atomic weight of this is 16, we will take 16 gram. If atomic weight of this, if this is heavier, for instance, uh, uh, oxygen, 32, we will take 32 grams. And the number of molecules is basically what? It's the weight of the entire amount which we take divided by the weight of one molecule. That's the number of molecules. Okay, and the number of molecules will be the same. So that's very important that if we will take the amount of uh, any substance in grams equal to atomic mass of the corresponding molecule, we will have the same number of molecules, right? So if, you have, if I have this one weighs, let's say, A, and this, uh, some other object weighs B, and I will have uh, a certain weight of this, like a million of A, and certain uh, weight of B, which is a million of B, that actually means that the number of these items will be a million here and a million here. So this is the molecule of um, methane, this is the molecule of oxygen, oxygen, this weighs uh, 16 atomic units, this weighs 32 atomic units, so 16 gram of this will be the same, will have exactly the same number of molecules as 32 gram of this. And this amount of substance is called a mole. So a mole of CH4, the mole of methane, is 16 gram. The mole of oxygen, 16 plus 16, 32. And this number is amount of energy to break each bond uh, when you have a mole of this substance. So for four of them we have 16, 40. For 10 times 4. Now for oxygen we have uh, 494 kilojoule per mole. So now we actually have amount of energy needed to break this bond or this bond. And again, it's really sophisticated theory what kind of bonds these are and why the amount of energy is such and such, etc. 
So knowing this amount for uh, any mole, we can actually find out amount of energy which we will release when we will burn, uh, let's say, one mole of methane, 16 gram of methane. Okay, so let's just do similarly. In case of CO2, CO2 is this. So we have to break two. Um, it's 7.99 each. So which means the total will be 7.99 times 2. So this is also 7.99. So total will be 1598. So this is one connection, one bond which we have to break. This is four bonds, each for 10. This is two bonds, each 7.99. What else do we need? H2O. Okay, H2O is this. So we have to break two bonds. And each bond is what? 460. So it's 920 together. Now, let's count. So we have uh, CH4, which is 1640 plus two molecules of oxygen, so it's two times four ninety uh, uh, four. So let me write it over there. So we have sixteen forty kilojoules per mole plus two times four ninety four and this is equal to 26, 28. That's on the left side. On the right side, uh, we will have, um, by the way, in grams, that would be what? Um, uh, 32 and 12, 44. And this would be uh, uh, 2, 16, 18, 12, 36 gram. So that's our equation in grams right so on the right side we will have one molecule of co2 which is this one which is 1598 and uh, two molecules of h2o so it's two times 920 which is equal to 3438 3438 so this is energy in and this is energy out or left and right, whatever you call it. You see the difference? The difference is 8, 10 kilojoules per mole. That's amount of energy we will get in a form of heat, in the form of heat. Whenever we are burning 16 grams of methane, it will consume 64 gram of oxygen from the air we actually know because if if the air is unlimited supply of oxygen now this is controlled obviously because it's um, given through the pipe so if we will measure 16 gram of CH4 then burn it it will consume this much it will exhaust carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and vapor and 810 kilojoules of energy will be released. So that's the calculation of the energy related to atomic bonds. Now, um, again, one thing which kind of makes me a little uncomfortable, I really don't know how they came up with these numbers, how to break each bond. As I was saying, it's kind of a sophisticated theory and experiments together and they came up with these numbers. But these numbers are known. So for each connection, we know basically what's the energy of this bond, how much energy is needed to break this bond. Um, and uh, that's actually all I wanted to talk about today. So um, from the theoretical standpoint, I think I have explained everything I wanted about chemical energy. Um, I'll probably make a little exam 
not very difficult one because it's not really like too much energy <laughs> too much theory behind this energy of the bonds i mean i mean there is a, a lot of theory but not as much as uh, uh, for this course, because the theory, the real theory, is significantly more complex. It goes inside the atoms. Um, now, what is important is that um, we were able to kind of simplify our universe from all the different kinds of substances to little bricks from which these substances basically are uh, built. The molecules. Now, each molecule. And there are, again, millions of different kinds of molecules now, but each molecule contains only about a hundred different elements, I mean, no more than a hundred of different elements, uh, in different quantities and in different combinations. And now we have simplified millions to a hundred, millions of different molecules to a hundred of different atoms. Now, each atom in our simplified, again, model uh, uh, approximate. Right. Each, mod each atom contains only three elementary particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. So that simplifies it even, it's even more. So from three uh, elementary particles, we have about a hundred different atoms, and from a hundred different atoms, we have millions of different molecules. That's how the whole pyramid actually is, is built. It's all very beautiful, and uh, unfortunately it's not 100% uh, corresponding to the uh, real life, real universe, which is significantly more complex. But again, for our modeling purposes, we, we are not really studying how the universe is really created. We are building the model. The model has certain behavior, which, well, more or less approximately corresponds to the way how the universe behaves. And then we are studying the model. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.